Good morning class. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I would like to talk about the six facts for an object on an inclined plane and I would also like to take a look at one of the practice problems. So let's go ahead and get started. So right here we have an inclined plane and we have our object drawn on the inclined plane. What we always want to do is start out with the weight force due to gravity. So the weight force vector points down and is perpendicular to the horizontal. So we know that weight force is identified by F sub G. So for fact number one, we have F sub G is perpendicular to the horizontal. Now, this weight force vector can be broken down into its x and y components since it's on an inclined plane. So fact number two is the y component of weight force, it points down and it is perpendicular to the inclined plane. So let me go ahead and try. Right here. And we're going to label this F sub G sub y. So the weight, the y component of the weight force, so f sub g sub y, is perpendicular to the inclined plane. Okay, now let's talk about the x component of weight force. So it's going to point down and it is parallel to the inclined plane. So what we have is this right here and we're going to label it F sub G sub X because this is the X component of the object's weight force. So F sub G sub X is parallel to the inclined plane. And what we can do is we can project this X component of the weight force down right here using the head to tail method. So what we're going to do is place the tail of the X component of the weight force on the head of the vector or Y component of weight force. So we're going to project it down using the head to tail method here. And I'm going to go ahead and label this vector here, F sub G sub X. And this is going to give us a right triangle there. So on number four, we need to talk about the normal force applied to the object. We know that normal force is identified by F sub N, and we can draw that vector right here. So normal force applied to the object, F sub N, is equal in magnitude to the Y component of weight force, and that's our vector here. It's equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So what we have here is an interaction pair. Whatever the value for the Y component of the weight force, whatever the magnitude there, and it's pointing down perpendicular, to the inclined plane, normal force will be equal in magnitude, but pointing in the opposite direction. Next, we have the friction force. And we know that friction force always opposes motion. And right now, I'm just going to label this as a subscript of friction. I'm not going to be specific about static friction force or kinetic friction force. Right now, let's just talk about the fact that the friction force points up the inclined plane, 
which is in the opposite direction of the x component of weight force. So the force of friction points in the opposite direction of the x component of weight force, okay? And the last fact for an object on an inclined plane is the angle theta between the inclined plane and the horizontal is equal to the angle, and we're going to call this angle theta since they are the same, between the weight force due to gravity and the y component of weight force, okay? So, theta between the inclined plane and the horizontal, I'll put an equal sign, is equal to angle theta between the weight force due to gravity identified by F sub G and the Y component of weight force identified by F sub G sub Y, okay? So with these six facts, let's go ahead and take care of our first practice problem. So a 37 kilogram crate sits on a frictionless inclined plane with an angle of 22 degrees from the horizontal. Draw a diagram to represent the crate on the inclined plane and A through D here, okay? Now before we start calculating anything, what we want to do is just go ahead and draw a picture. So very similar to this over here, we have our inclined plane. Our angle theta is equal to 22 degrees. We have our crate right here, and we know that the weight force due to gravity is going to point in a negative y direction, and this vector is actually perpendicular to the horizontal or the surface of the earth. So I'm just right here, I'm just going to show my perpendicular sign. We have a right angle here, okay? All right, next we need to calculate the weight force due to gravity. We know that the mass is 37 kilograms. It gives us that. So what we want to do now is calculate the weight force due to gravity. So F sub G equals mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. The mass of my crate is 37 kilograms. We know that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So go ahead and get out your calculator. So 37 times 9.8, negative 9.8, is equal to 362.6 newtons. And that's negative. It's pointing in a negative y direction. So I'm going to go ahead and label this here. This is part A, calculate the weight force due to gravity. F sub G is equal to 362.6 newtons. Right here I have a negative sign because we multiplied by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Right here we do not need a negative sign since our vector is showing us the direction, okay? So 362.6. Next it says calculate the x component of y force and part C is calculate the y component of y force. So what I want to do is refer to the six facts for an object on an inclined plane. And take a look at my vectors here. We know the x component of weight force points down the inclined plane and it's parallel to the inclined plane. So what I have here is the x component, f sub g sub x, and I have a y component that points in a negative y direction, 
and it is perpendicular to the inclined plane. So let's go ahead and label that F sub G sub Y. Okay, let's go ahead and project our X component of weight force and we're using the, help, the head to tail method here. So the tail of our X component of weight force is going to be placed on top of the head of the Y component of weight force. Now let me go ahead and label this here. And we know according to fact number six that the angle theta between the weight force and the Y component of the weight force is equal to angle theta that is between the inclined plane and the horizontal. So this angle is 22 degrees and we have a right triangle here. Okay, so if you take a look at the right triangle here, we know that the opposite side length in this case is the X component of weight force. And we know if we're dealing with an unknown opposite side length, we're going to use sine. So sine theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. Now, when we were performing vector resolution earlier in chapter five, when, whenever we use sine, we would associate that with the y value. And whenever we use cosine, we would associate that with the x value. But this is different. And so what we need to do is take a look at our triangle, okay? And so sine theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. We know that, we've done this several times. But in this case, so sine theta, theta, everything is with respect to this angle. The opposite side with respect to the 22 degree angle is right here, okay? And so what I want to do is rewrite this equation. So I'm going to take my base equation and adapt it to our situation. We have sine theta is equal to the X component of weight force divided by the weight force, okay? All right, our X component of weight force is our unknown value here. We know F sub G, we've already calculated it. So what we're going to do is isolate the X component of weight force by multiplying by the weight force due to gravity on both sides of the equal sign. On the right hand side of the equal sign, weight force due to gravity, that cancels out. So we're left with the X component of weight force is equal to the weight force due to gravity, which is 362.6 Newtons. And then we have sine of the angle theta, and we are at 22 degrees. Okay, and our weight force is negative here. So we have 362 times sine of 22 degrees. It looks like I am in radian mode, one moment. Make sure that your calculators are in degree mode. Okay, one more time here. So I've got negative 362 times sine of 22 degrees. There we go. All right, I have a negative 135.6 Newtons, okay? And so since we have a negative sign here, this is just telling us the direction that it's going down the ramp. And we know that the X component is parallel to the ramp, but we're going down the ramp. So I'm just going to go up here and label 135.6 Newtons and our vector arrow is pointing down the ramp for us. Okay, now let's calculate F sub G sub Y. So we're looking for our Y component of weight force. Now, taking a look at our triangle here, with respect to angle theta, our 22 degrees, let's take a look at our adjacent side length. So our adjacent side length is the Y component of weight force. 
So our base equation for cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse. Now, let's adapt this base equation to our situation here. So cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side is our y component of weight force. So f sub g sub y. And we're dividing this by our hypotenuse for this triangle. The hypotenuse of the triangle is this vector, and that is the weight force due to gravity. So f sub g, OK? Now we need to isolate our unknown, the y component of weight force, by multiplying both sides by weight force. On the right hand side, weight force cancels out, leaving us with the y component of weight force is equal to weight force due to gravity, which is negative 362.6 newtons times cosine of 22 degrees. Okay, so we have negative 362 cosine 22 degrees. This gives us a negative 335.6 newtons. Okay, so let's go ahead and label the diagram that we've drawn. So the negative sign is telling us that we're going in a negative direction, but our vector arrow our arrowhead is pointed in a negative direction. So we don't need the negative sign because we're labeling our diagram here. So 335.6 newtons. So that's part C. Part D, what is the normal force identified by F sub N? So according to fact number four, the normal force is equal in magnitude to the y component of weight force, but the vector points opposite in direction. So this is our support force, okay? So F sub n is equal in magnitude, but points opposite in direction of the y component of weight force. And we just calculated the y component of weight force. So the magnitude of normal force is 335.6 newtons. Okay, so that is A through D. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or give me a call. I will be more than happy to help you. I hope you have a wonderful day.